Today on The Hookup, we're gonna automate a sliding glass door lock for around $50. No more waking up in the morning and realizing that the door was unlocked all night or laying in bed and wondering if I remembered to lock it. All right, time for me to show my cultural ignorance. Do you guys even have sliding glass doors in other countries? In the US, or at least in Florida, I'd say 90% of the houses have at least one sliding glass door. And automated locks for them basically don't exist, and that's probably for good reason. Unlike standard deadbolts on your front door, which are mostly the same at least within your country, there doesn't seem to be any standard for how these locks work. So what we're gonna do today is totally abandon the lock that came on the door and make our own secondary lock. And then once we have it all working, we can just disable the primary lock or we can keep it as a backup. This video is sponsored by HolidayCoro.com, one of the largest light show vendors in America. And the best time to get into the hobby is right now in the off season. By starting early, you can make sure that you're all ready to go when Halloween and Christmas sneak up on you. Holiday Coro has you covered with pre-built kits, including props, controllers, LEDs, and power supplies to give you that boost that you need to start your first show, or maybe just level up your existing show. Check out Holiday Coro using the link in the description to support this channel. Like a lot of my projects, this started out pretty simple, and then it got gradually more and more complex as I made it work exactly the way that I wanted it to. At the most basic level, you can just buy one of these electric drop bolts, a smart plug, and a 12-volt adapter, and you got yourself a solution. Whenever power gets applied, the bolt extends, and you can just screw the receiver into the top of your door, or even just tape it with double-sided tape which is significantly stronger than it needs to be considering the whole door is just made out of glass and if you really wanted to get in, there's one clear and easy way to do it. But for me, this solution had some issues. First, I wanted a manual button for locking and unlocking. Second, I didn't like the look of the two metal housings. And third, the drop bolt only extends when the power is on. And that means if I lose power, the door just unlocks. So on that note, let's talk about the two types of electric locks. Any listing for an electric lock should say either fail safe or fail secure. Fail safe means that if it loses power, the lock just unlocks, and fail secure means that the lock will be locked whenever there's no power. On Amazon, I could only find the fail safe version of this lock, but for me, that's not ideal. Thankfully, it's pretty easy to modify the fail safe version into a fail secure version. But stop, there's probably a reason why only the fail safe models are available. If your power goes out, like maybe during a fire, your door will lock and there will be no way to open it, leaving you trapped inside. That alone should terrify you enough to stop you from doing anything stupid. But if you need another reason not to do it, unless you have an alternate means of opening that door, it is also against fire code basically everywhere in the world. In my situation, failsafe isn't necessary because I could just open the other side of the door. But if you don't have an alternate method for opening your door, you should absolutely opt for the failsafe model. Please don't go do something stupid and put yourself or your family at risk for a little bit of automation. Having said that, to convert from a fail safe to a fail secure mode, you'll need to disassemble the lock and then use a hammer and a small punch of some kind to remove the hinge pin for the actuating arm. Once that hinge pin is removed, you just rotate the mechanism 180 degrees to switch it from normally open to normally closed. The other thing that needs to be modified here is we need to disable the read switch that's on the circuit board. This switch is there to only allow the door to lock when it's in the correct position. However, in our case, this means that it can only unlock when it's in the correct position. Meaning if the drop bolt ever gets extended when it's not in the correct position, there's no way to retract it and therefore no way to close the door. Anyways, all you have to do is get some wire and wrap it around each end of this read switch. I also used a small bead of solder for good measure, but that isn't totally necessary. You can leave the other reed switch alone, which just gives you feedback on the position of the door through the white and yellow wires. If you don't need positional feedback, you don't need to hook up those wires at all, and you don't need to mess with that reed switch. Next, we need a Wi-Fi smart relay with a switch input that can run off of 12 volts. And that sounds like a perfect job for the Shelly 1 to me. To wire up the Shelly 1, you'll first switch the jumper from regulated mode to 12 volt mode. But be careful because if you screw this up by reversing your positive or negative wires or providing more than 12 volts, that's gonna be the end of your Shelly. Attach a short red wire to the positive terminal and another to the I terminal or input terminal. And then attach a short black wire to the negative terminal. The red wire from the lock will connect to the O terminal on the Shelly, which is the output. All of the red wires are gonna to connect to the positive wire on the 12 volt power supply and all the black wires, including the black wire from the lock, are gonna to connect to the negative wire of your power supply. Additionally, if you're gonna hook up an external button, one wire of the button will hook to the negative wire on the 12 volt supply and the other will hook up to the SW terminal on the Shelly. 
If you don't want a button, you could also hook up the white wire from the lock to the SW pin and the yellow wire to the negative on the power supply. And that would give you positional feedback in the Shelly app to let you know whether the door was open or closed. I also decided to 3D print a case for this, so I'm gonna take this whole mess and put it inside of this nice little package. There's a spot to run wires for a button and the mounting holes line up with the mounting holes on the actual lock. The parts just slide into place and are friction fit. I also left enough room above the Shelly 1 to fit two lever lock style connectors for easier wiring. In addition to the case, I also printed a custom sized shim for above the lock so that it would line up properly with my door frame and a custom receiver for the drop bolt pin. I actually made all these models in Tinkercad, which is a super simple free online modeling tool. I've got all the projects linked in the description if you need to modify them for your use case. For instance, if you need a larger or smaller shim, all you have to do is open up that Tinkercad link, click on the object, and then input the height that you need in millimeters. Then hit the export button, choose STL, and you're ready for your 3D printer. I attached my main lock to the door frame using some 3 inch screws and my custom receiver with some Gorilla double sided tape. If that's not strong enough for you, you can screw it into the door, but be careful not to screw into the glass pane while doing it, because that would be a really expensive mistake. Once you've got the hardware installed, you can control it straight from the Shelly app, or you can integrate it into a home automation hub like Home Assistant for more automated control. For instance, I'll have this door lock whenever our house goes into away mode, meaning neither mine nor my wife's phone are within the GPS zone of our house. I'll also automatically lock the door at night when the bedtime routine is triggered, and I'll unlock it in the morning whenever the kitchen light gets turned on, and whenever the house goes from away mode back to being occupied. If I ever want the door to be locked while I'm home, I can just press the manual button or activate it in Home Assistant, and it won't change again until the next automated state change. Overall, this is my favorite type of project. Just enough tinkering to be fun without being overwhelming, relatively cheap, and it solves a problem that I had without introducing other issues. The only downside to this project is maybe its power usage since the drop bolt is technically an electromagnet. The Shelly by itself uses about 2 watts of power and when the lock is engaged that jumps to 6 watts. That means that if I estimate 12 hours of unlocked time per day that would be 35 kilowatt hours per year or just over $2 in electricity costs at 6 cents per kilowatt hour. This is easily worth it for me, but if your power costs are significantly higher, it may not be worth it for you. I've got Amazon and AliExpress links for everything that you need to complete this project down in the description, along with my Tinkercad projects and STL files. If you've got questions about the project or you just get hung up during the process, go ahead and leave a comment here, or better yet, come join the thousands of automators on the Hookup Home Automation Facebook group. Thank you so much to all of my patrons over at Patreon for your continued support of my channel. If you're interested in supporting my channel, please check out the links down in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching The Hookup.